Hey guys, Mark here, and a couple of months back I bought a brand new 2020 MacBook Pro, and for a time I was really happy with it. It was well built, it was fast, and it was more or less everything that I needed in a laptop at the time. But then came the WWDC keynote and the announcement that Apple was going to be making brand new Macs that have their own processors in them, and that Mac iOS and iPadOS could all be sharing the exact same apps in the near future. Apple even demoed a full version of Final Cut Pro running on the same A12Z CPU that's in the iPad Pro. That one got me thinking. It seems like Apple is really moving towards making their tablets into fully featured touchscreen computers that might even be able to replace laptops entirely. After a few days of debating the pros and cons, I decided to full send it and I sold my MacBook Pro and bought a 2020 iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. This video is dedicated to my experience with the new iPad Pro and what I think of it as a laptop replacement. But before I get right into that though, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. This is a game you've no doubt heard of before, but just in case you haven't, let me catch you up real quick. It's a turn-based RPG where you can collect hundreds of champions and use them to slice, dice, and pound enemies to a pulp through a content-rich and exciting storyline. I've always been super into fantasy novels about wizards and magic, so using my boy Kale here to turn these guys into dust with a dark bolt never gets old. I've outfitted him with a full set of offensive weapons and armor, so he does absolutely massive amounts of damage, but he can be a bit of a glass cannon, so I still need to be careful. Still, they can't hit me if they're dead, so I just make all of them disappear with his Acid Rain ability. This game looks fantastic in 120Hz on the iPad Pro, and it's incredibly satisfying to build a team that synergizes well to blast your opponents off the face of the earth. Within the past couple of weeks, they've added a bunch of new updates, too. First, they've just added Champion Fragments, which lets you collect pieces of champions that you can use to summon specific awesome champions, with special events running all the time. There's also a new Bazaar where you can load up on high value items with the gold bars you win in Tag Arena, and they just extended the daily login rewards up to 270 days with free champions available just for logging in. It's been a crazy month for updates, so there's never been a better time to start. Use my link in the description below, and if you're a new player, you'll get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, an energy refill, a clan boss key, five mystery shards, a one day XP booster, and one free champion, the Executioner. I wish I had this code when I first started playing because this guy is real strong. All this free stuff will be waiting for you in this little box up here when you start playing. Good luck and thanks to Raid Shadow Legends again for sponsoring this video. All right, back to the iPad. Like I mentioned in the intro, one of the biggest reasons I decided to ditch my MacBook Pro for the iPad Pro is that Apple is doing their darndest to blur the lines between what is traditionally considered a laptop and a tablet. After the introduction of iPadOS in September of 2019, the iPad gained a plethora of new features that made it much more viable as a portable workhorse. Slide over multitasking, a more usable files app with external drive and SD card support, a desktop class version of Safari, and of course, everybody's favorite mouse and trackpad support. Then came the release of the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro, which not only had a fantastic set of scissor switch backlit keys, a USB-C port for charging, and an incredible hinge mechanism, but also had a trackpad with full gesture support. It's an incredibly expensive accessory and to be honest it's probably not worth the asking price but if you can swing it I think it's one of the best accessories to come to the iPad Pro since the Apple Pencil. I'll have a full review on the Magic Keyboard coming soon so subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when that video drops. With the new iPad OS features and the Magic Keyboard together, the iPad Pro inches ever so closer to that full-fledged laptop experience, but it's far from perfect. It's ascended past what you would traditionally call a tablet, but it just falls short of a fully-fledged laptop in a few key areas. The first and possibly most frustrating to me is the lack of proper external display support. To be clear, you can absolutely hook up the iPad Pro to an external display using a, a USB-C, a Thunderbolt 3, or USB-C to HDMI hub, but the moment you do, you can start to see the problem. The iPad Pro does not adapt the OS to fit the external display, it just uses the same 4x3 aspect ratio in almost every app. There's a few exceptions, like Netflix and a few other video apps, but not being able to utilize the full real estate of an external display is somewhat bothersome. There's also no extended display options. You can't use the iPad screen for one display and then the external monitor as another. So you're stuck with two screens that essentially show the exact same thing. You can't even turn off the iPad's display completely or close the iPad like you would in a clamshell mode with the MacBooks. Additionally, the inclusion of a single USB-C port can be limiting and even debilitating at times. A USB-C hub is a must if you intend to use things like SD card readers, HDMI outputs, wireless mouse dongles, etc. But I realize that a lot of people that are buying an iPad Pro are doing so for the portability of it, not for the ability to use it as a docked workstation. So let's just move on from that. 
despite the massive amounts of apps that are available on the App Store, the iPad just doesn't have the same software versatility as a Windows or even a Mac laptop, at least not yet. That could definitely change in the near future as Apple moves into making Apple Silicon-based Macs. All right, so you've persevered through all of my crotchety ramblings about the negatives of replacing a laptop with an iPad Bro. Bro? iPad Bro? Let's talk about the positives. The first one is quite obvious given the size of the iPad Pro, it's insanely portable. Even with the Magic Keyboard attached, it's still quite a bit smaller and lighter than almost every laptop on the market. It's an iPad, so it's also got an incredible touchscreen with Apple Pencil support. I'm not going to deep dive into the Apple Pencil in this video, but for creative types, that thing is seriously incredible. You don't get either of those things on many laptops nowadays. The 2020 iPad Pro also has a color accurate 120Hz high refresh rate display and it looks and feels better than any laptop display I've ever used, even though it is on the small side of things. It's great for gaming with apps that support 120Hz and even doing some video editing with LumaFusion. On some models, the iPad Pro even has LTE support, so if you're in a place that doesn't have Wi-Fi, you can use your SIM card with a data plan to have access to the internet no matter where you go. The 2020 iPad Pro also has an incredible set of cameras. The main 12 megapixel camera seems to be carried over from the iPhone 11 and can shoot some incredible 4K 60fps video. These shots were taken at sunrise at the most easterly point in North America, Cape Spear. The dynamic range, color, and sharpness are all great. It also has a 10 megapixel ultra wide that can shoot 4K 60 as well, but the selfie camera on the front is only a 7 megapixel shooter that can capture up to 1080p video. Still, I don't think anybody's going to be complaining, all three cameras on the iPad Pro are going to beat out every other tablet or laptop on the market and can even take on some of the most modern smartphones. Then there's performance. The H12Z Bionic CPU in this machine is seriously top notch. It can edit 4K video from my A7 III and LumaFusion without a hitch, even with a color grade and effects layered on top of it. For reference, the 2020 MacBook Pro base model that I had could not do that without having to drop playback quality down significantly. Video editing on this thing works so well that I think it could even compete with my i9 iMac in render times. Let me know in a comment below if you want to see something crazy like that. Games run more flawlessly than just about any other mobile device I've ever used, and with that 120Hz refresh rate, a lot of them are buttery smooth. The CPU and GPU is held back by its measly 4GB of RAM though, and sometimes it shows. Overall system performance is still great, but the iPad will close out apps that you haven't used in a little while to save on memory, and that can get kind of irritating at times. Battery life is pretty darn good though, and I can get a solid 6-7 to seven hours of screen on time even when using apps that eat system resources for breakfast, like LumaFusion. Alright, so this has been a pretty information rich video, so let's wrap it all up into a nice little bundle and talk about who this switch can work for and who it might not work for. For creative types and students, switching from a laptop to the iPad Pro can be pretty much ideal. It's a portable and light system that's easy to use and has a ton of creative ability with excellent battery life. But it's not for everybody. People that use a lot of niche programs can find the iPad Pro to be not as versatile as they're used to on traditional laptops. Engineers, for example, who rely on CAD programs are probably not going to find what they need on the App Store. No matter who you are or what your use case is, something like a USB-C hub is going to be necessary at times to get around the limitations of a single USB-C port, and there are going to be some things that just frustrate you or require some strange workarounds. Not only that, but the 11-inch model with the Magic Keyboard costs almost as much as a base model 2020 MacBook Pro, so you really need to make sure that the iPad Pro is going to be the right fit for you before you take the plunge. Overall though, I've been very happy with my decision to ditch the MacBook Pro in favor of the iPad Pro, and as long as you've heeded my warnings and you know what you're getting into, I think the iPad Pro is actually a pretty viable little laptop replacement. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel, and as always, have a great day.